so I've been drawing birds for a while and um, it's fun to notice uh, when a, a, a change comes along. And what I want to do is because I've taught a number of classes on how to draw birds and some of you may have um, kind of cut your teeth on those classes. In this one, I just want to start off just by showing folks what I did before and why I don't do that anymore. And so let's just start with um, this. So this is the inside cover from my Peterson Field Guide to Birds. And what's really fun about this is that this little diagram right here, uh, it's got all these birds and it's, they're all just silhouettes. But what's amazing about it is you can identify these birds by those shapes. The, the, the form, the silhouette of the birds is so distinctive that you can, you can when you see the bird and if you see, uh, if you just see its shape, you see it backlit, you'll be able to identify those birds. Which means for our drawings, the, getting the basic shape of this bird is critical. It's critical no matter how many chickadee details you put on something, if it's got the body proportions of a crow, it's not gonna look like a chickadee. And so let's take a look at um, what my, my approach was for kind of getting down that basic shape before and how that has changed. All right, so here's what my old system was. The angle that the bird sits at, I knew was important. So I used to start with just sort of a kind of a line that would go through the middle of the core of the bird. And on top of that, just like sticking a hot dog on a stick or a marshmallow on a stick, I would I'd put in an oval for the body of the bird along that line. And then I would stick a head on that bird. And from, um, and, and when I'd be doing this, I'm kind of, this would be my stage for kind of looking at proportions, like how big is the head relative to the body? That's important. But um, then I would give myself a couple of lines. One is what we call the eye beak line. So it turns out that the eye and the beak are on the same line in the bird. So that one line kind of gives you the locations of both of those. The eye sits on top of that line. The beak is in the middle of that line. So that was a useful line. And it also stick out a line showing me where the tail was. And then I would just sort of trim in and kind of carve a few of the angles, like under the throat, underneath the tail. And that would give me my basic bird form. Um, you can stick legs and wings on these. But with that framework, this is next thing is going to be a big jump. Um, oh, sorry. That, my, my pencil that I would do this in, I would do this really lightly with a Prismacolor um, uh, a, a Prismacolor pencil that is this pale non-photo blue one. Um, I've found also that if you don't have one of these pencils to do your initial block in of this shape, uh, any really pale colored pencil will work, but I particularly like the erasable Cole erase non-photo blue pencil. But if you don't have that, you're still okay. Just get yourself a really pale pencil, a real pale colored pencil. And you do this initial drawing lightly with that pencil. And then on top of that, you're going to draw in all your details. I know that this is a big jump and we'll get to like, how do you fill in all the details later? But I just wanna see, we wanna see sort of the relationship between this, right? And that, right? So that this drawing is built on the structure, the framework of those lines that I had already put in. <clears throat> and um, because of that, the bird's going to end up with, the, with, the, with the, the right posture, the body angle, the proportions, head to body, and those sort of things. Now, what's wrong with this? Well, it's, it's an okay system. It's an okay system, but it just got better. Let me show you one of the big problems with this, is that people would tend to, you'd get to this stage. Here's my stick, and here's my hot dog. And what people would tend to do, I saw it again and again, is because there's that stick there, people would always just put the head onto the stick. So they would take the head and stick it on there. And what happened is this sort of forced birds into this really weird, awkward, kind of what we, I call a study skin position. Scientists, when they, um, uh, they, 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 if they kill a bird and they want to study it later, they stuff it in this kind of you know, long position 
that's kind of like this and it doesn't look very much like the bird in the field. Um, you'd get these sort of I'm leaning way out postures. And the birds would have this kind of, oh, this, kind of this big kind of head forward look. Um, in life, the bird's heads usually hang out behind the level of the breast. So you can think of kind of like a force field in front of the bird's tummy. And the head is gonna typically stick behind that force field. And so the, this, this line through the body just tend to make every, tended to make everybody just sort of get that head way out there instead of back behind the force field. So um, <clears throat> what is, and there's, there's one other approach, uh, problem with this is that in getting this bird, kind of getting this, this fast bird, sometimes getting what, is, what exactly is the axis of that body, right? I want to get that line right, but what direction is that line going? And also what artists call the negative shape, which is the shape of the air behind the bird here, that angle and that shape, if, there's, if it's straight or if there's a little kink in it, ended up being really important in kind of getting the subtleties of the posture of the bird. So what I realized is that if you, you can actually start just with the negative shape on the back of the bird. So instead of going through all these other things, I now start with what is the shape of the air behind the bird? Sort of going down from the back of its head along its back, what is that angle? And is it straight up when you get to the head, like we see on the left, or is there a little kink in it? That little difference is huge. So if I, so now what I do, okay, so let's just take this. What I want everybody to do is on your finger, I, on your screen, I want you to reach out and, and trace the shape of the back of the bird here. Pat the bird, feel that slope coming down, feel that? Now that's the line that you're gonna draw on your piece of paper. That's your first line. So you're gonna pat the bird and you're gonna hang the rest of the drawing right off that line. So what this line does is it gives you the posture, the angle that the bird is sitting and the way that the head is connecting into the body. So you can have its head down like this or the head can, see that little kink in the back? Now pat the bird, pat the bird. You're gonna come down that head, change angle at the back, right? So get out there, pat the bird. Now draw that line, that angle, on your piece of paper. So you're gonna draw lightly in that line on the back of the head down to the back. That's your critical first line. And the whole bird is gonna hang off the back of that. Let's try another, All right? Draw in that line coming right down the back, off the back of the head and then straight down that back. So by the way, if you're not, if you don't have a piece of uh, paper in front of you and a pencil in your hand, just go get one right now. It's gonna make this whole class work so much better. If, if these are your thing like, I'll, I'll remember this. I'll just kind of, you know, sit along and kind of follow you along here. This will be great. No, your brain will not absorb it nearly as well. Um, this is gonna be a, 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 a follow along workshop. So get that piece of paper in front of you and everybody we want that angle, all right? Compare it to this one, all right? Pat the bird, pat the bird. Now draw that angle coming straight down, straight down the back of the head and then down. That's your critical first line. And I find now when I walk up to a bird and I'm looking at it through my binoculars, sometimes what I'll do is I'll just take my hand and just start patting the bird in the air, kinesthetically getting that angle. If I can get that angle, I'm finding that the rest of the bird is gonna snap into place so much more easily. So let's take a look at how that happens. All right, this is my lovely assistant. And let's take a look at the back of that bird. 
right? So you're going to come down, whoop, down that head, then a little step straight down, and then a long slope. That top of the head slope and that back slope, kind of a similar angle. There's a little bit of a step in there. So that's the angle off the back of the bird. Everybody draw that on your piece of paper. Lightly, loosely, quickly, not pressing hard. You're going to keep this light and loose on your piece of paper. Now, what I do is I'm going to put in at the top of that a little ball for my head, a little head ball. Not worried about the eye, the detail, anything about this, just a little ball for my head. And I'm also going to put in a little eye beak line that is going to show me, again, the, the, the notice on that photograph how that if you go right down the center of the mouth, the eye, that you continue that line through the head, the eyes just sitting right above that line. Now, the next part is I want everybody to pat the bird's tummy, right? Scratch it under the chin and then pat its tummy. Feel that line coming down and a little bit of a curve. Look at the shape on this photograph. Look, look at first the shape of the neck and the belly and notice how the, the contour of it, the, 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 that, that edge is easier to see if you look at the gray background instead of the bird. So everybody look at the gray background, not the bird. You notice how the, the contour, the edge shape pops into your head in a totally different way. Right? That's that's what you're going to do. You're going to now draw in lightly, loosely, just coming down the throat and a little bit rounding onto the belly, right? You're gonna get that, that little negative shape looking at the gray air, not the belly of the bird, to attach your head into your body. Now, you see that space between the lines, between that curve of our body coming down and the back? Imagine a little body ball in there. That's where our little body ball fits in. And this is where you're really thinking about proportions. How big is that body relative to the head? <clears throat> right? You make your, head, your body too big, um, your bird won't be cute enough. You make your body too small, it's going to make the head too big and your body bird will be too cute. All right. So this is where we're now we're sort of thinking about the proportions, but you've got, you're kind of going to tuck that body ball up underneath, but between that belly and that back. And notice that those two circles are overlapping each other, the head circle and that body circle, they overlap. You'll see that a lot. It's, they can stretch their necks up really tall, but usually they're kind of tucked in a little bit more. Right. Note the direction that that tail is coming out. I usually just lead that with one line, say like my tail's kind of coming out in this direction. Um, and that tail can change its direction. It could have its tail cocked up. Sometimes wrens will do that, that the tail can swing down. So the tail can be a lot of different positions, kind of pivoting from the point where you see it starting on this drawing. Imagine it pivoting down from there. And now, let me just sort of toggle this. What I'm doing is I'm looking at the forehead angle and the angle underneath the tail. This is a place underneath the tail where the belly feathers curve in and they meet this little pad of feathers on the underside of the tail called the undertail coverts. That is a really nice place to look for some cool, very birdy angles that allows you to kind of attach your tail in in a, in a, in a better way. And then I also look at the, what is the angle on the forehead of the birds? I'm, I, I discovered that that forehead angle, whether it's steep like a wall right in front of your, where you come off the beak or kind of sloping back more, that gives, your, that gives you a lot of the birds sort of head shape and facial expression. So look at that forehead, 
get those undertail coverts there. For the wing, usually when I start, I just put in a line along the what's called the leading edge of the wing from where I see the point in the shoulder by that yellow spot straight down to the tip of the wing. And then um, there is a pad of feathers. We'll get more into feathers in the advanced class on, and all the details of wings. Um, but for now, just sort of think of there is a sort of thicker pad of feathers that sits on top of it that gets skinnier as you get towards the tip. Um, so I'm putting in that sort of straight edge and then sort of just a, a pad of feathers, noticing where it kind of angles into the body right in here. The legs come out at a forward angle and tuck down into the ball of the feet. So for now, just give yourself a little circle where the feet are. And these are my essential bird lines. These are my essential bird lines. And what I do is, I know that's a big jump and we'll get into those details, but the, the critical thing here is that if I start with this, I have already solved a ton of the problems of making this bird look like this bird. And now I can get in there and I can start to add details in, but the bird is going to fit into its own silhouette. And that silhouette is that critical part of making that bird look like that bird. And we'll get into details on, on heads, we'll get into details on wings. But what I want you to see is that this underlying structure, that's, that's the game changer. And so what I've done is I've now started by instead of drawing the, uh, that, that center line and kind of building up those circles, I now kind of cutting to the chase much more quickly. I get that essential line, that posture in the back of the head, put in the head, get how the head tucks into the belly, and then I tuck a belly up into that. That little process has made drawing birds a lot easier for me. And so, um, I'm going to recommend that we play with it. Let's first just take a look at one more example of how this goes. Um, because, um, so this bird has a slightly different posture. So notice that this one is straight along the back. Let's just walk through the basic process of drawing this bird in and then um, actually, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to jump over to my document camera, and I'm going to real time draw in how I would put these lines on a piece of paper. And so what I want you to see is sort of the speed and the looseness that these initial lines are, are made with. And then we'll jump over to this, this bird and we'll kind of walk through it step by step and kind of look at how we will construct it. Hi. Uh, let me see here. We are going to go to the cam. There it is. All right. <clears throat> A bird pops up. I've got a mechanical pencil here. Uh, it's filled with uh, colored lead. And I'm going to use this to draw in my basic form of the bird. So um, I look at the bird and I pet the bird. I pet the bird and go like, oh, actually, let me just look outside my window here and see if there are any birds showing up. Nope, my daughters are running around in the yard right now. All the birds flew away. We put in a zip line. They cannot stay out of the yard. Um, so. I'm going to draw a little bird here, and um, here is the angle on the back of the bird. Right, let's zoom down on that. Right, so what you see is I'm, uh, this is kind of happening quickly, right? But I, I want to get this angle. I want to get that angle there. Then here is where my bird's head goes. And then I'm blocking in the front of the tummy of the bird. 
So you see, I'm making multiple lines here. I'm, it's not like this. It's not like this. I'm not going like this. With a slow, careful line. These are like, doo -doo 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 -doo, right? That's, I, if, if I draw slowly and deliberately with one line like this, what my brain does is it locks into this must be a correct contour. This feels much more inconclusive, right? Because it's lighter and there's more of them. That's going to give you wiggle room to change your mind and put that contour on a different place in your bird. If you draw it like this, it'll lock your thinking into this and you'll go like, oh, here is the edge of my bird. I just want to loosely get that down here. And here is my, my bird body. So notice that my hand moves quickly, lightly, loosely. Right. So do you get the, sort of the feeling for this energy? Um, and then what, what's, what's neat is that when you've got this, you're thinking, but now I've got all these little scribbly lines, right? Oh no, I don't want that mess on my page. But check it out. Once you start drawing over this a little bit more deliberately with a dark, bold line, your brain jumps to these lines. Those pale blue lines in that other color, your brain goes, just ignore that. Ignore those lines and, and just look at these ones that I'm now putting in. We'll get to kind of how to, how to manage the details on the face, what are the feather groups and all that other sort of stuff. But see how your brain is sucked into those hard lines that I've put in. And even though there was a ton of blue stuff out there, your brain is just going, just ignore the man behind the curtain. Right? And this is even more dramatic if you put color on it. So I'll just pop out a nature journal here for a second. All right, so here is just a quick whoo, getting down the basic shape thing. Um, here that is here not using blue, but here you can see that under uh, under those bold lines. And then look over here, when you get color on it, your brain just says, oh, I'm, I'm not distracted by that stuff at all. I'm not distracted by those, those lines here. Watch your brain suck into those bold lines and ignore those light ones that blocked in the basic shape. Even when I haven't added color to it, you see that those lines aren't a distraction, but they're essential to getting that form. So those lines underlie all of these drawings. Now, <clears throat> let's go back to our regularly scheduled program. Um, hi. We're now going to jump back to that screen share. And if I can find it. Oh, where is my we pause just for station identification for a moment here.
There we go. Sometimes managing my Zoom screens confuses me. All right, here's this little birdie. So on this one, we pet the bird and we start with just a flat line across its back. It's going to be the same pr procedure though, but um, a, a very different posture. And the, the next thing we put in that head, so that head hangs down. It doesn't have to stick up uh, above that line. The head hangs down from that line. And there's its little beak. And remember, the next thing is we pet the, we scratch its chin and we pet its tummy, right? So we pet the bird and there we go. And then we've got the back posture. What this, the, what's crazy about this is that looking at negative shapes, the shape of the air next to an object, that's, that's, a, that's a really advanced drawing trick that professional artists use all the time. They're constantly looking at negative shapes. What I love about this is it gets us these two critical negative shapes, the one on the back and the, con and the one in the front, we put those together hanging off of that head and then we've got, we're really building our bird with a, a, essential shapes right off the bat. So then I'm gonna put in a body of the bird. This is where I'm looking at how big is my body relative to the head that I have. And if you put it in and it's too big, I'm gonna make it smaller. And so you can put in several body shapes and because you're putting it in lightly and loosely, your brain's not gonna lock on. If you draw, that circle in really hard and forcefully, it's gonna to be too much in your face and it's gonna feel like one of your final lines. So don't do that to your brain. Keep this part of your drawing kind of like tentative, wishy-washy. And then um, you'll be able to change your mind. There's my tail line. And so see, it's just the same steps. There is my, uh, the angle of the feathers on the undertail coverts and the forehead. I'm blocking in my wing here, that leading edge of the wing, and then Take a look at that wing. Just for now, notice that there's sort of this big bump of shorter feathers here at this angle. It sort of seems like a bigger lump. I'm kind of putting in where that lump is. Those are called the secondary feathers of the wing, where they kind of change into the primary feathers, the long ones. Um, so I'll put in that leading edge and just sort of notice where there is that bump on the back edge of the wing <clears throat> and drop that in. And the legs, again, they come out at a forward angle. And that, everybody thinks that the secret to drawing the bird is gonna be, how do you draw the beak? How do you draw a good eye? I'm having trouble with feet. But more important than any of those things is getting this shape down. Because again, with this shape, with an, the accurate shape, people will be able to identify your bird, even if it's just a silhouette. And then when you put your details in on top of that, and again, we will kind of go down the rabbit hole um, later on uh, today of, you know, what are all these different sort of sections of plumage and that sort of thing. But that's going on a framework that already has established this critical birdie shape. And that's the game changer. So don't draw hard, heavy, right from the start. Don't start on the eye and the head and work your way out from there. Block in the whole shape of this bird. We're starting with these angles and then building out from there. And that really changes the way that we think about looking at the bird and allows us to get those proportions and that basic shape. Now we get to try it. So here's a bird, beautiful little Leslie Bunting here. 
was my the bird that I did my master's thesis about. I studied the songs of these birds and just geeked out with these for a couple of years. And um, we're going to make a sketch of this together. What I want everybody to be doing right now is to be petting the bird. Look at that negative shape on the back. Now, let's, on your own, I want everybody to put in, we're going to draw, we're going to draw that shape. We're going to draw that shape of the bird. Let's put um, in your basic lines. I'm going to be doing this at, at home too. Your important thing isn't to be watching what I do. Um, it's to be making your own quick little sketch. We're going to be doing several of these. And you want to put in some reps. This bird will be here for about 10 more seconds. If it's taking you more time than this, my guess is that you're drawing slowly. And on this next one, here's your big challenge. It's to triple your drawing speed. Keep it light, keep it loose, but let's just get that pencil moving more quickly and see what that does to the way that you see and observe. Ready? Okay, everybody shake your hands out, shake your hands out. Everybody, don't, don't draw yet. Everybody pat the bird. Sit there and pat the bird. All right, there's your little back. Okay, All right, pet its tummy. Scratch its little birdie chin and feel that curve. Look at the negative shape. Look at the curve under the throat there. Look at the negative shape, the gray behind the bird. This is a little yellow warbler. You're saying, but they don't have orange crowns, but they do on the Galapagos Islands. So let's draw this little Galapagos warbler. You ready? And it will, it'll be around for just a few more seconds. Now this one, that back of the bird is flat. This is chunky. This is a dumpy looking bird, All right? Everybody notice how big that head is relative to that body. Big old head, big old head. Look at how underneath the throat, we're coming straight down and then curving back down into the belly. Back of the bird is straight. Everybody hold your hand out at the angle that you see the back of that bird. See, these are the sort of things we want to get when we're first looking at a bird. Now let's put those lines down on our piece of paper.
if it you make your body circle too big, it's not going to look uh, chunky enough. In a moment, we'll try another bird. So if this is feeling rushed, um, I, I'm going to encourage you to make these sketches looser, more free, and, and, and just sort of lighten up on yourself on, on how you're kind of drawing. My hunch is that you'd be, you're, you're trying to draw more precisely and carefully and slowly. But in this, it's really going to help you at the start to be fast, light, and loose. Light is a very useful part of that. <clears throat> So pet the bird, go through your procedure, and when you feel ready, transfer that shape to paper. What do you notice about the proportions of this bird? Is it a big head, small head, medium? At the start, when you're first looking at birds, everything will feel medium. Everything will feel medium. But the more you kind of do this and it gets you looking at these sort of proportions, you'll start to go like, oh, that one has a big, that's a small head, that's a big head. You'll kind of get this kind of intuitive sense of, of those proportions for you. And um, that will help you be able, when you look at a bird, be able to see that. I like to notice where on the body that wing starts. Where does it start? Is it in the middle here? It's so towards the, the front there, it's closer to the belly than it is to the back. And is it the tip of it going above the tail or below the tail? If so, how far? So if I can get in those two positions, it's gonna help me block in that, that wing shape or that initial wing position line. We're going to do one last bird. Oh, good idea. Oh, I stopped share. Well, maybe we're not going to do one last bird. Um, so here are here's uh, the ones that I, I've been doing. Um, if you look at these, there you see there's no detail in these, and it's just sort of rough shapes, but take a look at them and sort of see like, oh yeah, I know which one you were doing there. Right, see if you can pick out any of those, those forms. This approach to drawing, not, I think is, 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 is game changing. 
the focusing on that negative shape on the back of the bird at the start gets you the posture of the bird and the angle. It gives you a place then to hang the whole belly from. Also the general idea of starting lightly, starting with a pale colored pencil um, that is easier to ignore. Then when you get your details in there on top of that critter, um, you're going to find that, that, that people will ignore your blue pencil lines And it, it's so it's as if you remember when you were writing a, an, an essay um, back in school, or maybe you still are, and, and your teacher has you make that outline before you start drawing. I mean, before you start writing your paper. This is exactly the same thing you're going to create the roadmap of where you go. And then you're going to come along and, and add in the details. But because you've already figured out a lot of the essential things, that drawing is gonna be much easier for you to manage because you've already figured out the angles, you're, essentially filling in a silhouette that feels like that bird. And I can get things really off with this bird, but if that silhouette still reads, it'll be so much closer to that bird. And if you start the other way, starting with details, then you will get a bird with chickadee head details, but the head the size of a robin. And it's not gonna feel like a chickadee. It's not gonna feel like a finch. It won't feel like a warbler because it doesn't have that, that gestalt, that, 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 that oomph uh, feeling of that bird. That's my initial process. And that's the process that is behind every drawing of birds that I do. Interestingly enough, if I'm doing a mammal or a landscape, or um, I'm using these same principles, I'm I have slightly you know if I'm drawing a mammal, of course I've got slightly different you know lines, but I'm putting in that line in the back and then hanging things right underneath it. If I'm drawing a landscape, I'm lightly blocking in the proportions of these things with my pencils and then looking at negative shapes to get in those big features before getting in there and like now I'm going to noodle in this tree. It's a really useful way to make it easier. For, what it's doing is just making it easier for your brain to take that thing that you see and get it down on paper. You don't have to do it all at one time. So you're gonna compartmentalize it. First, you're going to, um, to get shape and proportions. And then on top of that, you can come in and put more details. Your brain will collapse under pressure if you try to do everything all at once. Our brains are not designed to handle a ton of information at once. And so if you're doing the basic details and the shape at the same time, then you're asking your brain to do too much and it will rebel. And you'll get at the end of the drawing, you'll be like, oh, my head's too big. And at that point, there's nothing you can do about it except go like, oh, bummer. But this solves that problem. So um, now, uh, uh, Natalie has uh, been uh, collecting some questions in our, our, our chat. And I would uh, love to, to, to find out, are there, as you look down that chat, Natalie, do you see any kind of really high percentage questions, things that seem to be coming up? Hi, yeah. Um, yeah, so um, you got about 10 minutes um, and I uh, wondered if you um, could talk a little bit about how you would use these techniques when you're nature journaling in the field. Um, what other kinds of things do you put on your nature, nature journal page? Maybe you have some examples. Sure. Funny you should ask. I have a whole shelf of them. Okay. 
and uh, I'll, I'll be showing um, more of these uh, later, but <clears throat> during my the, 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 the keynote. But let's take a look at what uh, journaling with birds can look like. The idea of the journal is that I'm going to use words and pictures and numbers, maps, diagrams, bullet points, lists, um, as many different tools as I can to kind of get my brain to get in there and dance with whatever phenomenon or bird I am checking out. The drawing is only one part of that. So the drawing is a tool in the service of that kind of observation. And so this is uh, here. Let, let, let me, here we go. I'm going to back this up. And so you can see. Um, so here are some sketches of some different kinds of birds that I'm seeing. You'll see very often there are multiple poses of the same bird. And what I'm doing there is as the bird is moving, I am then jumping to a different sketch. And then the bird moves again and I jump to a different sketch. Um, the, uh, you know, some things are very cooperative. This is a little pygmy kingfisher that hit my friend's window. And um, he uh, called me over and it was, he was sort of nursing it back to health and we had it in our hand. This is life size, this little kingfisher. This is, it was life size. And um, so in something like this, I can sit there and I can get in just a ton of, of detail. On something that is you know, further away, I'm, I'm not. These are um, cormorants and darters, and they're moving around. And so I start drawing one, it moves. I just start a new drawing right next to it, and I end up, but I, but I, but I start my next drawing approximately the spacing that these birds are apart from each other. And so as the bird moves from one position to another, I can bounce back and forth between these and, um, and be drawing all those birds but 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 it is it's it's easier for me because you know if the bird walks away from me I'm now drawing this and then I see side view I go back to this but I end up with this cluster of birds that was a really big crocodile um, let's see some more bird stuff so you see. There's, there's, there's maps, there's different positions of birds. Here is just a little study of the proximity of these birds to each other. These birds like to hang out on a stick together. And I can get that in just a little, so there's no detail, but just notice how this little thumbnail conveys a ton of information. Here is a Malachite kingfisher. And um, it first perches, I get one view here. As it turns its head away from me, it turned out that this bird liked to look away from me a lot. So I started this view, the back of its head. And then it flew out, tried to get some fish, came back to a different position on the branch. And so I started another drawing. And then for a moment, it flipped this crazy crest that it has up and forward. I was like, ah! Look at that, that's incredible. And so here is, I'm not sure I've got all the details right, but this gives me the general impression of this thing just going Pow! Right. This, um, my ability to draw this stuff, drawing's not a gift. It is a skill that you develop by again and again and again and again and making a bunch of pictures. So the more that you do this, the better and better you are going to get at it. And drawing things like this, it's not a skill that is going to, that you need some 10,000 hours to develop. Um, it is, it's a, it actually comes really fast once you start doing it on a regular basis. The signal that your brain is gonna need 
to to kind of motivate it to build the structures in your brain or to allow you to draw is just repetition. So if your brain sees that you're kind of, you, you're keeping at this repetition with effort, um, your brain builds the structures around that. Cause there's, there's actually a specific neural network in your brain that is associated with drawing pictures. And if you haven't been drawing, you haven't been developing those neurons. But at any age, you can start to develop that neural network. And um, in one year of just drawing on a regular basis, you can make huge changes in the physical structures of your brain. Is there another question, Natalie? Um, yeah, we just got a, a, a couple minutes. Um, the, um, do you take photographs to use, um, la use later um, to add details and color, or do you do it on the field? That question's um, this is This is all done in the field. This is all done live in the field. Um, I do take photographs of my family. Lovely. And um, I, do you have any um, recommendations for, for paper? And was the black, what, can you talk about the black pen? pen that you were using for outlines? Oh, sure. This is just, this is a, a ballpoint pen. So this okay. is just a uh, regular ballpoint pen and um, it ran out of ink and I went to the store and I got another refill for it. I'm not exactly sure. Let's see, the refill uh, doesn't have a name on it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just, it is a, um, it is a, uh it's just a a, a, a ballpoint pen okay um and um, i've moved over to using ballpoint pens a lot in the field because they don't smear i actually started to do that on this trip in rwanda um, if you look at the start of the book everything is in pencil and when i'm working in pencil i can't draw on both pages because this page will smear over onto this page and so, uh, oh, that's that big scorpion that I found in our apartment. Um, uh, so, and I realized I'm going to run out of paper on this trip. But you like, see how much this pencil smears over onto this side, all this stuff, that's pencil from here. And I was thinking, oh no, I'm gonna run out of paper. So I realized about, yeah, here. I realized that um, I need to transition over to ballpoint pen. Um, and uh, oh, those are the also Anna stickers that my, my daughters had. Um, yeah, and then I realized I, I could do stuff on both pages and the ballpoint pen doesn't smear. So that's why I'm, um, I, I, I really like those. And the thing that's cool about a ballpoint pen is that like a pencil, with a, with a pencil, I can, here's, here's the, the cool trick that the pencil has, right? I'm drawing with a pencil. I can go hard and I can go soft, right? And I can make these little gradations. With a ballpoint pen, I can go hard and I can go soft. So a ballpoint pen, I press hard, I get a hard line. I press lightly, I get a lighter line. And it's not quite as smooth as the pencil, but it still allows me a little bit of that kind of wiggle room. So that's why I, I do like drawing with, with ballpoints. 